So tell us a bit about what this story is and um, what's different about it. Um, well, it's what the movie is about is a filmmaker who is, uh, it, the subject of the film is also my co-director and her mm -hmm. name was Alex Zichel. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a movie you know, by us and about her as she struggles with metastatic breast cancer, which is a terminal disease. Mm -hmm. And the plot, if you will, is her as a filmmaker trying to make a fictional movie about a character a lot like herself mm -hmm. in a situation virtually identical to hers, which is to say with the same diagnosis. Only the hope is, or her hope was, that this character might deal with it a lot better and, you know, sort of be the glass half full version. And This is played by Lily Taylor. Yes, exactly. The wonderful Lily Taylor. The wonderful Lily Taylor. Um, you know, and the idea is, can you use your imagination to transform your relationship to a really crappy situation? You know, if there's no cure for your disease, can you at least have a better relationship to it and try to live more peacefully with it? Which is obviously challenging. I'm sure. It did Alex, she, uh, she came to you with this idea, or how did this she, come about? This? She, we were very old friends. She came to me with an idea of the fictional movie, just, you know, making the fictional movie. Mm -hmm. And she said, I have this movie playing in my head, and I can see it, and it's the glass half full version of me. And I said, great. And then about, you know, three days later, she said, I don't know if I can actually make a movie. I mean, it sounded like a good idea, but I'm not Just sure. whether she had the strength to do it? Or? Well, she was physically in really great shape, but whether she had the bandwidth, but even more to the point, she wasn't sure she wanted to make a fictional movie because she felt like she had always used fiction as a means of escape. And she wasn't sure that she didn't want to confront this more head on. And so she said, maybe I want to write a memoir. Maybe I want to do a video diary and blog about it. Mm. Maybe I want to make a documentary. And I said, well, let's just keep talking about it. So we kept talking about it. We kept talking about both versions of it mm. for a long time. And at a certain point, I said, well, to the extent that this is a documentary or has documentary elements, we need to pick up the camera. We have to start shooting because we're missing stuff. Yeah. So we did before we knew exactly what the movie was. We just started shooting and very um, intuitively or just, you know, we shot what we felt like. We interviewed the people we wanted to interview. But we continued to talk about the fiction and, and we didn't rule out the fact that we might drop the doc and make a fictional movie. But what ultimately happened was that it became clear at a certain point that both of the movies were one and that what we were making was a movie about making a movie. So by the time we shot the fiction, it was designed to be part of the doc. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, at a certain point we thought we were making a feature length fictional movie with a 90 page script and everything. But as it evolved, by the time we you know, finished that script, it was a 35 page script and it was supposed to be part of this doc. Mm. So that's how it came so out. So are you happy with how it came out? I am, I'm really happy with how it came out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's always things that you say you would do differently if you could do it again, but that's mm -hmm. just the process. Mm -hmm. And how did you work as co-directors? Because that, that seems like it must have been very tricky since she's a subject of the film and the direct and the co-director well, you know, and it's her story, so yeah, you must exactly. Feel like you know, well, us being co-directors evolved as part of the process. Um, you know, initially we thought we might be co-directors when we were talking about it in, in the initial stages, and then when we decided, when we were sort of just about to embark on shooting the fiction, Alex said, you know, I think I really want to be the director, and and you know, I want you to be the producer, and I said, fine, you know, I mean. I, that's what I do for a living most of the time. And, Producing. And, yeah. And, um, and our collaboration was so fluid. It didn't, you know, I was happy to define it any way, mm. any way she wanted to. And then, um, but then we were both in the editing room all the time. And then when she got sick and it became clear that she wasn't going to be alive to finish it, you know, we, we both felt like we needed to both be directors because I didn't feel that as a producer I could finish a movie without a director, quite frankly. Um, and she agreed. I mean, you know, you can't. You need a director. So, so that's how it came about. So has Alex 
Alex died. Alex who, passed away. In June of last year. Yes, I'm sorry to be telling you that on camera, live. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's terrible. It's really sad that she's not here to see this incredible movie that we made together. What stage? What stage was the movie at when that? We, when she, you know, like I said, she was really healthy virtually the whole time, and then when she got sick, she got sick very fast. And and when she got sick, we had more or less just finished watching all of our footage. So I feel very grateful that we watched it all together and had, you know, it took us six months to do it. Um, so we had conversations about pretty much every every minute of footage. Um, and you know, we had like 120 hours of doc footage to go through. Wow. So, um, and we had just finished putting our index cards up on the wall to figure out what the story structure would be. But, um, and when she got sick, you know, sort of in between dealing with her as my friend and her illness, you know, I was also working on putting together an assembly. So, you know, I had just finished an assembly when she died. It was like a three hour assembly. But. That's yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah, it's, te it's awful. I mean, it's awful and it's sad and it's a terrible loss. And, I, you know, I miss her all the time. Um, it's this weird paradox about this movie that it wouldn't exist in the first place if she hadn't had a terminal illness because that's what it's about. So it's so, you know, um, inextricably bound up, those two facts. It's hard for me to peel them apart. That's quite, quite a legacy for her to leave and quite a so. gift that you gave her. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I hope it's a legacy. So. Yeah, yeah.